Now in the final part, part D, we're asked to find the position vector, that's the vector O to C, where the lines cross. Now in order to do this, what we've got to realize is that at this point, this is where both the position vectors of any point on this line and the position vector of any point on this line are exactly the same. Well, we already know the position vector of any point on the line L1. It was given by the vector equation R equals, and that was the answer to part B. You take your equation of your line, and let's suppose we take the version that R equaled O to A plus any amount in the direction of AB. That was the vector equation O to A, which was 2, 6, minus 1, followed by any amount, we called it lambda, in the direction of the vector AB. That was 1, minus 2, 2. So that's the equation of the line L1. I'll write L1 is such that the position vector of any point on the line is given by that. Now we look at the equation of the line L2. And this is a fairly simple one. If we just look at L2, we can say L2 is such that the position vector of any point on this line is going to be, well, we just go to the origin, so you could argue that that is naught, naught, naught. Possibly a bit unnecessary, but I'll just put it in there as a token to say that I've started at this point. And then I travel any amount along this line of this vector here, the i plus k vector. So any amount, I'm going to call that mu, and then write the vector i plus k as 1, naught, 1. So, at the point of intersection, we should find that there's a value of lambda and a value of mu that we could put in here that makes them vectors r exactly the same. And that vector r will be the position vector of c. So, I can say that at c, we would have that this vector here would equal this vector here. So I'm going to write that down, that we would have that 2, 6, negative 1 plus lambda multiplied by 1 minus 2, 2 equals this vector here. I'm not going to bother with the 0, 0, 0 though. I'm just going to write mu 1, 0, 1. Now because we know that these vectors do intersect, we're told that at the point C, then all I need to do is find a value of lambda or mu to uh, establish where C is. And to do that, to avoid simultaneous equations, I can see that because I have a zero in the J component here, if I was just to look at comparing the J components, I would get an equation with one unknown in, and that would avoid simultaneous equations. So what I'm going to do is therefore equate the J components. And if I do that, what I've got is 6 minus 2 lambda, 6 minus 2 lambda, equals the j component here. That's mu times 0, which is 0. And so, as you can see, I've got one unknown in this equation, so I don't have to resort to simultaneous equations. So therefore, solving this, you'll see that 6 equals 2 lambda, so lambda would equal 3. Knowing that lambda equals 3, all I need to do now is just simply substitute it into this equation here, into the equation for L1. So what I can say then is, we'll just scroll that up, all right, and we can say sub lambda equals 3 into the line L1. And this will give me the position vector of C. So therefore, what I have is the position vector of C, that's R, equals 
2, 6, negative 1, 2, 6, negative 1, plus lambda, lambda being 3, multiplied by the direction vector AB, 1, minus 2, 2. And working that out, we have 2 plus 3, which is clearly 5, 6, minus 6, that's 0, and then minus 1, plus 6, that's going to be 5. So therefore, the position vector of C, just write that in, position vector of C, you can write it in either as a column vector, or you could write it in as i's and j's and k's, so it would be just simply 5i, there's no j's, so just put plus 5k. There you go. And that brings us now to the end of part D and the end of the question.